Where was God before creating heaven? Listen, God does not live in heaven. If your goal is heaven, it's a stupid goal. You probably have also heard that God doesn't live in heaven and that if he lived in heaven, where was he before he created heaven? Today on Kingdom Matters, I will take the time to explain all this confusion by the grace of God. But first, let's watch what these three leading ministers of the gospel in Africa have to say on this subject matter. Then we will come back and relate all that they have said with the word of God. Apostle Suleiman, Prophet Angel, and Dr. Abel Damina. Somebody said, what was God doing before he created the world? That question implies the person is thinking time in their head. God lives in the circumference of himself, where the sender is everywhere and where the circumference is nowhere. From eternity past to eternity future, he is God, he is alone. He has never been with anybody. There is nobody like our God. He is August. Ah, the old preacher said no fast seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of a shore supply. You can't live without him and you can't outlive him. You can't vote him in and you can't vote him out and he's not going to resign. But our God, when he found he was alone, he split himself into three and he said, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, I'm still me, but I can communicate with me. So I'm in a community of the Godhead. So there is communication and communion and diversity in the community of the Godhead. This is the gospel according to Prophet Angel. God does not live in heaven. God does not stay in heaven. Why are you looking at me like that? I know you are going to say, but Papa, Matthew 6, 9, our Father, before, don't you think before I say what I said, that I know that scripture? You must understand that the problems with scriptures, you know why some people have problems with doctrine? Let me tell you why some people say, this is correct, this is not correct. Let me tell you why. The problem is not doctrinal problem, it's translation problem. Somebody holds on to this translation. In fact, if you read your Bible, in Matthew 6, 9, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallow be thy name. But message translation does not say that. It's our Father, who that's in heaven, reveal yourself. That's not hallowed be your name. Are you seeing the translation problem now? But the Bible says, our Father, what's in heaven? That's what even the message says. It's true. Heaven is God's office, not his house. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1, he says, heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. Do you stay in your office? Do you stay on your throne? So where does God live? Oh, somebody said God lives in praises. No, God inhabits praises, but he does not live there. He inhabits praises. Psalm 22 verse 3. Thou inhabitest the praise of Israel. God inhabits. If people start praising God, God comes down and stays with them. He occupies that place. That doesn't mean he lives there. If he lives there, where did he come from before they started praising him? You see, but Papa, the Bible says, Our Father what's in heaven. In Genesis 1 verse 1, he said, In the beginning, God created... If God created the heaven, where was God living before he created the heaven? First Timothy chapter 6 verse 16. Is the immortality that dwelleth in the light which no man approacheth unto. Is the immortal dwelling in light. So God lives in light. That is why before he created the world, he needed to come from here he was. That is why he said, let there be light. Because until light comes, I can come. God lives in light. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Fire. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. What is light? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What is light? John chapter 8 verse 12. So long I'm in the world. I'm the light of the world. Am I talking to somebody right now? You must understand the power of light. The power of revelation. When the word of God hits your spirit. When the word of God hits your mind. You move into the class of God. When the word of God hits your spirit. Sickness can remain in your body listen god does not live in heaven seller 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 god does not live in heaven so that's why your goal should not be heaven if your goal is heaven, it's a stupid goal. And like Pastor Paul said, heaven cannot be at last. It is heaven at first. So let me answer the other one. God does not live in heaven. So I know you're going to ask me, where does he live? 
Uh, you are already asking. The Bible calls God the immortality that dwelleth on unapproachable light, which no man has seen nor will ever see. So, if you say he lives in heaven, I have a question. But before I ask you my question, Genesis 1-1. Genesis 1 1. And I want everybody to read me like a mass choir. Everybody, Genesis 1 1. Once you go, in the beginning, God created. Now hold on. If there was a day when God created the heaven and the earth, are you catching the flow? So the question. so if there was a day when god created heaven and earth where was he before that day anywhere he was that is where he is because he said i am the lord i change it since god doesn't live in heaven then god did not create heaven for himself heaven is created for man so that's why the person in heaven now is the man jesus the man christ jesus is a man let's look god decided pastor paul that he wants to be a family man then God said, as a family man, my family must know me. But as God like this, they cannot know me. Because in my form as God, I am the immortal. Where I dwell is unapproachable. So God sat down. And God, follow me. God walked out of God. And God looked out god the lord said to my lord god said to god you go so when christ showed up the name of god that reveals his humanity is called christ christos the anointed one and his anointing you don't anoint god so for jesus to be anointed means he's a man how God anointed Jesus Christ, the man. Let me ask you. Jesus and heaven, who is more, which one is more important? Jesus. Are you sure? Yes. Which is more important? Jesus. Are you sure? Yes. When you got born again, what came inside you? Jesus. The heaven should not be your goal. Okay, let me ask you, where is heaven? Let us think about some things. Where is heaven? No, look at where heaven is. Ephesians 1 3. Put it up. Ephesians 1 3. Put it up. Let's read together like a mass choir. Everybody want to go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings where in heavenly wait 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 there is nothing like places in the original greek is in the heavenlies for there to be places means that god has plenty bomb bomb one here one here one here one here heavenly places so there's nothing like places it's in the heavenlies where are the heavenlies in christ so where is christ in you 
Apostle Suleiman's submission is closer to that of Dr. Damina. Only he made some fundamental mistakes, which still bordered on the nature of God he sought to explain. Same for Dr. Damina, but in a different fashion. We are going to see all this very soon. Now, I'm going to go straight to the point to answer where God was before he created heaven. And then we'll talk about whether God stays in heaven, whilst at the same time, like I said, drawing the lines in this three submission that we have just seen. This whole subject is in the area of the nature of God. So if you want to understand this, get it. It is about the nature of God. And we are able to rightly divide and put all of the revealed nature of God to us in scripture into their rightful perspective. We will miss it in one place or the other. And that's what I saw in these three submissions. The question, where was God before he created heaven, assumes a material God who is limited by space and is also limited by time. And that is the first problem in answering this question. God is spirit. John 4, 24. This means that God exists as an immaterial, eternal, and an invisible entity. Yet, he is a personal God as revealed to us in Christianity. Now, I will provide you the verses on the screen as I explain because I don't want this video to be very long. When we say God is immaterial, this is what we mean. It means God doesn't have physical body and he is not bound or limited by it. He transcends the physical form. When we say God is invisible or the invisibility of God, it means God is not able to be perceived by human senses unless he reveals himself. And when we say God is eternal, it means that God is without beginning or end. He exists outside of time and is not bound by it. He is everlasting. That is who God is. And this is not all that God is. This is not all his attributes. We will look into many of them like the omnipresence of God, which shows us that God is everywhere at all times, not just at the same time. That's why a lot of people say God is everywhere at the same time. It is more than that. God is everywhere at all times. Think about it. So if you know this, that God is spirit, which means he's immaterial, he is eternal and is invisible and coupled with he being everywhere at all times. If you know this about God, how can you ask where was God before he created heaven or say God doesn't live or stay in heaven? The question is where and which space is he not? Think about it. If he is omnipresent and a spirit, infinite spirit, where and which place is he not? If you are able to answer this one, then the question becomes very easy. He is everywhere at all times. So quit the question of where does God live? He is spirit and infinite in nature. In fact, he is life and existence. Everything came by him and through him and by him do everything exist. He is present in everything at all times and yet transcends everything he made and he is still separate from them. That is the God of the Bible. He is within and interacts with what he has created, which in theology is referred to as his immanence. But what he creates cannot comprehend him. But what he creates cannot comprehend him and how he exists. That's his transcendency. They are finite, but he is an infinite spirit being. That is why he is God. You cannot be able to determine his limits and who he truly is in totality. Man can only know what God has revealed to him about divinity. And in this case, how God lives or exists is not revealed to men. Yes, how God lives or exists is not revealed to men. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever and ever, that we may do all the works of this law. Do you get it? What we know in scripture is that if there is any place, it is constituted in God, and God fills it all in all. And yet, he is not limited by it, neither does he live in the time of that space. God is spirit. Now let's come to ways God has related with men in the Bible. This is where a lot of people were thinking, okay, so if he created heaven and he is in heaven, his throne is in heaven, then where was he? So they are thinking throne, they are thinking a material God. Let me show you something. In the Bible, there are a few ways God reveals and relates with his creation. We have number one, I will talk about the Shekinah or the cloud of glory. Now, this is a radiant divine presence of God represented by the manifestation of light and cloud. 
and this was to signify his dwelling among his people. This was mostly witnessed in the Old Testament where he would come upon the tabernacle and everybody could tell that God is here and then he would speak to the prophet Moses. It's called the Shekinah or the cloud of glory. It was one of the forms or ways in which God manifested and spoke and led his people. The, the second one is, is immanence. That's God's intimate involvement and presence within the created world. And in the believer and in his people, he does this by guiding and prompting them to his purpose from within them and from various situations. You can see it in Matthew 18 verse 20. And the third thing is in dwelling of God. This is also one of the ways he manifests himself to us. First Corinthians 3 16, we are the temple of God and he lives in us. Beautiful. This shows you the dynamic nature of God. Number five, the manifest presence. And this refers to the tangible experiences where God's presence becomes perceptible, often evoking spiritual awakening. And this is usually what happens when people have worship and the Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. He begins to show himself to them. He begins to talk to them and he becomes perceptible. People can relate with God. They can tell that God is here. And then the sixth one I'll talk about is Theophany. Theophany is a visible manifestation or appearance of God to humans. Often, he can come to you in dreams, visions, or even a physical form like he did with Father Abraham. And Lord's case, do you remember? Listen, it is a way God chose to manifest himself to his people. You understand? Like the three Hebrew boys in the fire, and then there is a fourth person. It's a Theophany. It's God manifesting himself to his people in a visible in a dream in a human form in a way they can relate with him like a person and then you remember um joshua's case when they got to jericho where the lord himself appeared to him you understand that's a theophany now none of this mean god left one place to the other don't think about god like that it is a manifestation to relate with men in time it doesn't mean God left one place to the other, and it doesn't mean that God was limited to time. No, it is a manifestation to be seen or felt so that he can do something in their midst. But it's been always present at all times. So when there is a prophecy and people are like, my children, my children, I have come, I have come. It's either the people involved are ignorant or it's not God talking through them because God doesn't come. He's always been here. He's been part of everything. He's seen everything. He's never been absent. Do you understand? Because even in the situation of a Shekinah or a manifest presence where you see God's glory in the cloud, it doesn't mean he was absent somewhere else. He only made himself more visible and perceptible in that particular place. So get it. God has always existed and is only showing us. He's only showing men. He's only showing angels a bit of of himself a bit of his glory in heaven god has a throne and it is covered in light which is also the light of heaven a light coming from the throne of god and is surrounded by heavenly beings and radiance that light cannot be approached unto that is what is described by apostle paul in first timothy 6 16. it is the throne of god in heaven now many people think that it that was the place where god was before he made heaven and it no that is actually the throne of god in heaven remember apostle paul had the privilege to visit the third heavens do you remember that was part of his revelations i know this this is a part of god or a manifestation he has chosen to relate with men and angels with just as he did with the tabernacle in the old testament where he will come upon the tabernacle they will see the cloud they will see the glory they will see the fire god's heavenly shekinah is upon the throne in heaven and from it proceeds lightnings and thunders it's a display of his power and his majesty and he's surrounded by glorious heavenly beings do you understand radiant colors and so many all inspiring sights now this is a place god wants to bring man into in eternity as a gift for believing the gospel of jesus christ and desiring a relationship with him and this i cannot wait to experience do you understand that is a gift also in that heavenly place we are going to be rewarded based on how we walk in faith and love as we honored our relationship with god so for any man to say if your goal is seven it is a stupid goal that man is to be challenged and questioned he doesn't know what he's talking about first peter 1 3 to 4 says 
Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfailing, kept in heaven for you. Hallelujah. So there is an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you and I. That is why after believing in Jesus Christ, you must seek to please God in all things. Because the more you please God, first entering is a gift. But then how great you are going to be in there is going to be based on how you obeyed God in faith and in love. Second Thessalonians 1, 7 to 8 says, And to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not know god and on those who do not obey the gospel of our lord jesus christ so don't you think that heavenly is a place because the lord is going to be revealed from heaven how do you say that heaven is in christ and christ is in us so definitely there's no place like heaven now if you want to know where jesus went and how heaven is i've captured it in a video of dr damina saying that jesus didn't ascend to heaven go and check it it's on this channel acts 1 10 to 11 says they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them men of galilee they said why do you stand here looking into the sky this same jesus who has been taken from you into heaven so he was actually not in the sky he went to heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven you understand and when he comes he's coming for the believers he's coming for his people you understand into that place god has reserved for his people so like the lord said our father is in heaven and the lord jesus christ himself was taken up into heaven our father who art in heaven it's not a translation problem any translation you take you are going to see our father who is in heaven in the new testament the lord didn't just say our father who art in heaven in that matthew chapter 6 you can find it about 30 times in just the gospels alone there's no doubt that our father is in heaven you understand let no man lie to you by some petty revelation our father is in heaven in what sense his throne is manifest and established in heaven but he is everywhere as well and he wants to bring us to himself in heaven a prepared glory for you and i do you get it philippians 3 20 says our citizenship our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a savior the lord jesus christ so we are waiting a savior the lord jesus christ from where heaven and our citizenship that's where we belong that's where we have our citizenship so get it god doesn't visit heaven as his office in fact to say god visits is wrong he doesn't go to and fro it is satan who is not omnipresent so he goes and comes god is everywhere if you are talking about god don't say god comes god goes god is everywhere he is present at all times at every place but his throne is visibly manifested in heaven in an unapproachable light which is the glory of heaven do you understand in fact it is not just the glory of heaven it is also the light of heaven the light by which heaven is lighted so prof angel was spot on when he said god lives in the circumference himself and everything constitutes in him that was perfect the problem was when he said god split himself into three god doesn't split himself into three god exists eternally in three persons i know these things are technical but if you take your time you understand it god doesn't split himself into three god exists eternally in three persons the existence of the three personalities of god is god's nature it didn't happen in time god didn't have to do it in time that's who god is that explanation is heretic is modalism god never splits himself that's the nature of god apostle suleiman said as i said they say verse one god doesn't live in heaven because the bible says heaven is god's throne as in god sits on heaven as a throne no that is meta a metaphoric statement showing god's transcendency how god has all of heaven as a throne and all the earth as a footstool think about it it means god is incomprehensibly vast the heaven and the earth as they are no matter how big they are they are just like a seat and a footstool to him you understand so it's metaphoric when dr damina says heaven is in christ and christ is in us he's also wrong this thought is not correct but i've already dealt with that in that video i talked i talked to you about about where jesus went when he ascended so you can search it out please go check it out and you will know what 
and said about that part. Do you get it? So how God lives and lives before he created heaven and earth is not revealed to man. And it is beyond our scope of comprehension. And no man can tell you where God lives and how God lives unless he shows us glimpses of it. Nevertheless, God reveals himself to us and relates with us in various ways. And the ultimate of it is what awaits us in heaven where we experience the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. The one we love, the one who saved us, and the one that called us. God bless you. I can't wait for that day. I'll see you in the next one. Now, I left the part of the clouds and the skies being also referred to as heaven in the Bible. But either way, whether the skies or the celestial abode of the throne of God, they were all created and so cannot vividly indicate to us how God lived and cannot vividly indicate to us how God lived before creation. God bless you and catch you. Keep you on fire for God. And I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Shalom.